Hello, I'm Norman Chesky, the third child of Betty Chesky and her youngest son. In case you're wondering why I decided to film this, it's not because I plan to miss my mother's funeral. No, on the contrary. I will be right in the room with you as they are playing this. It's just that there are so many wonderful things that I would like to express about our mother. And to be honest, I'm not sure that I will be in my best form during the service. I think you would agree that President Bill Clinton is one of the best speakers. He'll give a talk just about anywhere, but he chose not to speak at his mother's funeral. A mother's funeral is probably one of the most emotional days you could experience, especially if you have had a mother as wonderful as our mother, Betty. This has been a very difficult few weeks. All of you that are here today have come to honor our mother, who as we all know have passed this week. But some of you may not know that just a few weeks earlier, we also lost one of our family's closest friends, Bill Borkin, who passed away unexpectedly. He was 57 years old, a wonderful father, husband, he had a brilliant mind, and was one of my closest friends. And it's ironic that both my mother and Bill went within a few weeks of each other, because I've out of just about everyone I've known in my life, no one has loved life more than Bill Borkin and my mother. A matter of fact, this jacket that I am wearing belongs to Bill, and I am honored to be wearing it in his honor. His lovely wife, Viv, gave this to me as a gift. It was one of Bill's favorite jackets. He even had his name inscribed inside this jacket. You could see his name right here. So I would first like to say, Bill, we miss you. And I know that if you were still with us, that you would be right here in this room with us now, paying tribute to Betty Balther, who I know you loved. Our mother, Betty, actually played a major role in getting Bill and Viv together. My mother was Viv's teacher, and Viv went to visit her at Nautilus Junior High School when she was back from college. And it was that day that she met Bill's mother, Annabelle, who insisted that she go out with Bill, and the rest is history. That was our mother. She played a role in changing many lives for the better. Her favorite saying was, live for today, dream for tomorrow, and learn from yesterday. And all of you that knew my mother, I think we could all agree that she lived a very full life. She raised four children, Jeffrey, her eldest, David, myself, and our sister, Doralee. She also had a successful career as a teacher for over 30 years and made many wonderful friends throughout her life. I believe that our mother was ahead of her time in many ways. In her day, most young women were raised to stay home and raise children. Matter of fact, when she married our father, Harold, many people suggested she should drop out of college, but she wouldn't have any of that. Instead, when our brother Jeffrey was still an infant, she continued her education and received a degree from Boston University. She would later go on to receive her Master's of Education as well. And boy, did she take advantage of those degrees. She began a career in teaching that would become her passion. She was such a wonderful teacher, and I think to this day most people think that she taught just as a hobby. But I would like to set the record straight today. When her children were all young, it was our mother that was the true breadwinner in the family. Yes, she loved teaching, but she also worked to support her children. I wish I could tell you that our father was a wealthy man and that our mother was able to take her paycheck and buy fun things for herself, but that was not the case. I wish I could tell you that her second husband was a successful businessman who showered our mother with expensive gifts and trips, but that wouldn't be the true story. Our mother worked so her children could live in a nice home and have the necessary things they needed to have the proper upbringing. Our mother always kept a beautiful home for her family. She always took pride in how she lived. One of her favorite things that she would love to do on weekends was to go to garage sales and antiquing. She loved keeping a beautiful home. When I think of our childhood, I remember that whenever the circus came to town, she made sure her children went and we had good seats. When David and I were young, she made sure, sure we went to camp in the summer. When our sister needed something, our mother made sure she got it. And if she didn't have the money at the time, she certainly knew how to use a credit card and pay it off. 
but whatever it was, she was going to make sure that her children had it. As most of you know, David and I moved to New York many years ago, and we both have had a pretty good career in the music business. David moved first, and I followed two years later to New York. But we both acknowledge that if it wasn't for the fact that our mother insisted when we were young to take piano lessons, who knows where we would have ended up. The truth is our father thought, like many macho men, that piano lessons were for sissies. But our mother knew better, and she made sure that we had piano lessons every week when we were young. I have to admit, I'm not so sure it paid off for me, but certainly for David and my older brother, Jeffrey. To give you an idea of her generosity, when her oldest son, Jeffrey, married his wife, Annette, who is also a professional pianist, our mother purchased them a piano. Although she didn't have the money, she still bought it off and paid it off over the next two years. That piano still sits in their living room to this day. She also made sure that David and I always had musical instruments in our lives, whether it was a piano, saxophone, or trumpet. Can you imagine where David and I would be today if she didn't inspire us to be creative? Our mother always instilled tremendous confidence in her children, and I think that is what helped us become independent at a young age. She was always so proud of us. When she talked about her eldest son, Jeffrey, who is a PhD and a retired professor, she always compared his brain to Einstein. When talking about David's music, she would compare him to Mozart or Beethoven. When our sister Doralee made something in her art class, she would think it was a Picasso. And she certainly always made me believe that I could do anything I wanted. She always made her children believe we can do anything. I think everyone who knows our mother knows that when it came to her children, she was closest to her daughter, Doralee. They lived together for over 50 years. Mother loved being with Doralee. She always told me that she knew that one day her boys would all leave, but that Doralee was God's way of giving her a friend for life. That is what our mother believed. She always saw things in a positive light. As you all know, our mother was a teacher. And for all my years growing up in South Florida, I only wish I had a dollar for every time someone said to me, your mother was my favorite teacher, or your mother changed my life, or your mother helped me get into a good college, or your mother was like a second mother to me. I took these compliments for granted because they came so often. Just about every time we went out with our mom, we would run into one of her former students. She had taught thousands of students throughout her career, including our Rabbi Lang today. And I want to add, when I spoke to our rabbi about getting together for today, he said, I don't need you to tell me about your mother. She was a big influence on my life. When we were all sitting around the other evening talking about our mother, my brother Jeffrey told me about the time that he and his wife Annette decided to get married at the Justice of the Peace while he was on a furlough from the Army. They got married in the afternoon, and by that evening, my mother had arranged a party for them with a band. It was catered and almost 100 guests. Today, people take a year to plan a wedding. Our mother did it in six hours, and it must have been a great success because my brother and his wife are still married 43 years later. As the word got out about our mother's health, people have been sharing a lot of stories with me. In fact, the other day I was talking to Eugene Miller, who taught at the same school as my mother for 25 years, Nautilus Junior High School. He told me a story that one day he and several teachers were in the teacher's lounge, and one of the math teachers, Irma Swartz, said to my mother, Betty, I love those shoes you're wearing. So what did our mother do? She took off the shoes and said, here, Irma, you take them. They will look great on you. Yes, that was our mother. She would take the shoes off her feet and give them to you. Our mother retired full time over 20 years ago and then went on to do some substitute teaching at Dash. But this time it really wasn't for the money, but more to keep busy and stay connected to the profession she loved. She lived a very productive life after she retired. And I will add that if there was anything really special that she wanted, she was very good about reminding my brothers and I about all those piano lessons she gave us and how they paid off. During her later years, she was able to spend more time with her family. 
She took cruises with her daughter and grandson, Barry. She took many trips out west and to New York City to spend time with her newest grandchildren, Luca and Paloma. We even found time to take a family trip throughout Europe. We went to many countries, including the Swiss Alps and Venice. A matter of fact, a funny thing happened in Venice. When we were there, someone grabbed her purse and ran off. Believe it or not, David chased the guy down and got her purse back. David probably could have had a pretty good career in law enforcement if he didn't pursue music. My brothers and I have tried to remain very close to our mother. We got a call about two weeks ago from the hospice doctor who suggested we get down as soon as possible. I immediately contacted my brothers and told them they had to get on the next plane. The doctor said she only had hours. Jeffrey and his wife Annette immediately flew in from Illinois and David cut short his trip in Europe. They didn't think she would last more than 24 hours, but our mother was a fighter. She stayed around for another 13 days and she was in a very peaceful state. We had Rabbi Lane come over, say prayers. Even Doralee said a beautiful prayer and we were able to tell her how much we loved her. She was content. It was like she was at a party and she just didn't want to leave. She had a peaceful passing, and her children are all very grateful that we got to spend those final days with her by her side. So in conclusion, I say we could all honor our mother by following her favorite saying, live for today, dream for tomorrow, and learn from yesterday. Rest in peace, Mom. <laughs>